Good morning. Um, welcome to San Diego, America's finest city. Does anybody disagree with that? It was, uh, we ordered some nice weather for you. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, nice to be here at the Hard Rock Cafe. It was easy to find it because it's close to the Omni. So uh, we were, were uh, easy to find. Uh, you know, Derek has looked at the, uh, and planned the agenda, I think, quite well. And let me just tell you what my observation is about the agenda. Uh, it's been pretty conceptual uh, for the last couple of years. I think FirstNet has been kind of a conceptual idea. And I think this year we're really talking about um, uh, taking it to a new level and we've moved from concept to implementation. And uh, I think that's a real milestone and I think, uh, I'll talk a little bit about what that means to me. Um, because I think uh, it's interesting, he said he called to see if I was available. I don't know if all of you know that I actually have come out of retirement kind of unexpectedly, and I have a day job. In fact, I was actually on the phone this morning with my global team uh, talking about results. So uh, I'll share a little bit about how I see FirstNet transitioning. But um, I think with the nationwide network becoming a reality, it is time to start thinking about what that network is going to be and how it's going to operate. And that's going to be a real change. Uh, you know, we've been talking about this since what? 2001. Uh, so it's been a long time coming. It took Congress 11 years to pass the legislation. Uh, I think FirstNet is moving at the, at the speed of light uh, to get an RFP out on the street and, and hopefully get an award this year. So I think it's all important for you that we think about uh, what this means and how we're going to execute. Because, because running a network versus talking about it is a very different thing. And we have to talk about excellence and execution and operation. Um, so as you think about the next couple of days, I'd like you to really shift your head. And while we have some things to do, and I'll talk about what we have left to do, uh, I want you to be thinking about what does this really mean uh, to us and all the people who are involved in it? Because it's, uh, it's going uh, to change a lot. Um, you know, this conference always provides um, an opportunity, whoops, I don't have any slides, so I don't need that thing. Uh, the conference always provides an opportunity to look back and reflect on what has happened over the last year. Uh, more importantly, it provides an opportunity to look forward. And um, while I'm always interested in what happens today, I tend to look over the hood of the car. And I think it's that planning and that, and thinking about what's happening uh, uh, in the future that's really important for us, and I think it's important that we do that. Um, and so um, you all have had a vision for what this network was going to be for years, and we are now approaching the reality of that. Well, let's, start, uh, let's start taking a look back on the three key areas of focus and accomplishment this last year. Well, there's been a lot of activity. I would put it into three categories. One is we have strengthened and built uh, up the FirstNet organization. Um, you know, when I started as a board member in 2012, we had 15 board members and not one FirstNet employee. For the first six months, several of us, including Chief Johnson and many other board members, were actually doing management's work. Um, several of you in the audience, I think I see a couple of the folks who were on the early builders. Uh, I spent six months actually negotiating Spectrum lease agreements. Uh, we've come a long way since 2012. As you all know, last August, we brought on Mike Both as our CEO. And Mike brings a nice combination of public safety and technology. And I have to tell you, along with uh, actually, and some great leadership experience, we're very fortunate to have attracted somebody like Poth to FirstNet. We were also able to create a position of president for FirstNet. And we were very fortunate to actually appoint T.J. Kennedy to that president position. People kind of joke, it's like President Kennedy. You know, I'm sure he enjoys that title. Um, you know, T.J.'s background and experience at FirstNet is uh, incredibly important for the continuity. And Mike and T.J. together, I think, make a great team uh, to help us reach that success. Um, I'm actually very happy that we were able to create the positions of CEO and president. I won't tell you how many conversations we had to have inside the halls of the federal government to have that title, um, those titles put in place. People actually said to me, I think people are going to be confused 
about that. And I said, you know, I think the only people who are going to be confused are the people inside the halls of government. Uh, because frankly, that's what people expect this organization to operate, like a private sector company. And president and, and CEO is really an important uh, position to have. So we fought hard for that, and I think it served us well. And I think it should indicate to you how we plan to run this organization. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later and some of the constraints that we've had about that, but I think it should indicate to you that we're really gonna run it like a private sector company, and those titles should give you an indication. We also firmed up the roles of CTO, CFO, and general counsel. Jeff Bratcher uh, was appointed as the chief technology officer, Kim Farrington, our chief financial officer, and Jason Karp, our uh, chief legal counsel. Now, I know that people were concerned about those interim positions for a period of time. I'm looking at Donnie. Uh, Donnie asked me a lot about that. He said, what about these interim positions? I said, you know, you gotta relax about this. This is the way we do things in the private sector. You put people into positions, you see how they do, and if they are up to snuff, and then you appoint them on a regular full-time basis. So, um, so Donnie, it actually worked out okay, and we got those positions filled, and uh, it's nice to have that topic off the agenda. And we're delighted to have Jeff, Kim, and Jason in those key roles for us. We also brought on key staff and the rest of the organization to ensure the objectives that we set out could actually be accomplished. Some of those were key staff members in our government affairs group. And I will tell you, we, we don't give much visibility to the folks in government affairs. You know, they are not the people who are front and center. But let me tell you, I think without the leadership that we had, uh, from Ed Parkinson, I think Ed's at the back of the room, uh, and the great team that he's actually brought on, we would not be here where we are today. There's a lot that goes on on Capitol Hill and in, in you know, congressional circles and at state and local level that are very important to FirstNet. And without that early work and the building of that organization, I will tell you, as one person who was involved in that, we would not be here where we are today. So Ed and your team, thank you very much for, for that work. We've also uh, added to our key regional staff um, for our outreach roles, and we brought on local experience to actually augment uh, the headquarters staff that we had. We were at the Public Safety Advisory Council meeting yesterday, and uh, Daryl Ackley said, you know, thanks for stealing one of my best people. Uh, but, I, but I think that gives you an indication of the kind of talent that we're actually attracting to FirstNet, and it's great to have people like Jackie on the team actually helping us at the regional level, and we've done that across the other regions as well. Um, very important that we bring that perspective of our local constituents uh, to the organization and have feet on the street. We also added staff in technology, uh, bringing expertise in many areas, but particularly in cyber. Uh, I'm sure every day you wake up, you read something about cyber, and it's an evolving issue and obviously a big concern uh, for the FirstNet network. So I think Jeff has done an excellent job of augmenting his staff in the key technology area. You know, something that you probably don't see too much of, but, we're, uh, but we were also able to add some pretty terrific board members. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting board uh, from my perspective, because I actually sit on several public company boards, like Wells Fargo and a couple of other technology companies, and so it really is not what you would see in the private sector as a board. We have 15 board members, but uh, we do our best to operate um, as you would expect a public company board to do, and we were able to bring on Ed Horowitz, who has a great career in technology and leadership. And Ed has been very active, both um, in strategic discussions about uh, where FirstNet is going and also involved in significant customer meetings and other important meetings. And we were also ad able to add Neil Cox, who also brings uh, a long career of technology to the board. Uh, so having an excellent board is very important to me uh, because the board is very active in what uh, management's involved in. And probably if you were to ask management, they would probably tell you we're too involved. Right, right Mike? You're still in the back of the room, I think. <clears throat> But, you know, I think it's really important. I mean, we, uh, we're very interested in what, and we've got a lot invested. Uh, like I said, we were management the first six months, and so we have a lot invested into the success of this program. You know, the second thing we accomplished, I think, was to continue to reach out to the local constituents and the many constituents um, of the nationwide network for our outreach efforts. Um, the past year, we were really focused on preparing state 
and to ready stakeholders for the adoption and use of FirstNet. Uh, we broadened the engagement with uh, public safety disciplines. We actually went to, in fact, uh, Chief Johnson and I went and visited actually with uh, a lot of the leadership in the public safety disciplines and tried to talk at the leadership level so that they were aware of what our intentions were and what our strategies were. I think that was very useful and obviously the FirstNet staff did that as well. Now, I don't think numbers always tell the full story, but I think it's pretty impressive to know that the staff conducted over 400 events and reached about 60,000 people in their efforts last year. Now, you, that, may, that may seem like a great number. We have much more to do. And I think all of you as interested people in the, in the project can be helpful in us reaching out and telling the FirstNet story, but I think that's quite an accomplishment in the last year. Um, we um, continued our ongoing communication with Capitol Hill. Uh, I don't think you probably have an appreciation for how important that uh, was because unfortunately other people were up there telling different stories to our co congressional staff about what FirstNet was about, what the legislation was intended to do. And so it was a full-time job for our, our uh, government affairs staff to be up there explaining to everyone uh, what the elements of the legislation were and the status of our strategic roadmap. Again, I think it played great dividends to be able to do that. And they're actually there every day. Um, they, they work in Washington and they're actually able to go to, to uh, Capitol Hill all the time. We continued our engagement with the single points of contact, as you know, uh, with webinars, emails, uh, you know, uh, phone calls, and face-to-face -face contact. Obviously, the single points of contact are very important to us, and so those engagements continued and were important. And last but not least, our Public Safety Advisory Committee under the leadership of Chief Harlan McEwen continued its good work on the task work uh, to help us understand what operational issues we have to do. So thanks, Harlan, to you and PSAC for what you've done. So I think the FirstNet organization has demonstrated that it can deliver. Um, you know, I think there was some doubt in the early days whether or not, you know, we laid out the strategic roadmap in 2014. And I think it's important to note that we hit every milestone and we hit the milestone on time. And oh, by the way, we're frugally, we're pretty frugal uh, fiscally, uh, which I have to tell you on Capitol Hill goes a long way with the particular side of the aisle. Um, the third area of accomplishment was obviously uh, key to where we are today, and that is uh, the acquisition-related activities. We issued a draft RFP, um, and I think that was a good step so we could get good feedback from the industry on the way the RFP was written um, so that we could make sure that we did it in a way that they could put their best foot forward. Um, we did get good input, and as a result, we issued um, an RFP at the beginning of the year with um, objectives based. And I really want to emphasize the fact that I think the approach that FirstNet took in terms of the RFP structure did a lot to where we are today. If we had gone on a requirements-based RFP, I don't think we would have uh, received the innovation and the partnering that we see today in terms of the responses that we've received. Um, you know, for me, while there's 16 objectives in the objectives-based RFP, there's five, five key areas that I think are really critical to me. One, obviously, is the building, deployment, operation, and maintenance of the network. Um, given everything else, I mean, that's the foundation of everything that you do. So how that gets done and how they approach that is very important. Financial stability. Remember that this is a, this is a project that actually will self-fund in effect. Um, you know, we're not, every time we'd go to Capitol Hill, they'd say, well, when are you coming back for more money? Uh, people really didn't understand what the financial structure was. So financial stability so that we can not only build the network and maintain the network, but we can upgrade the network to new technology. As you know, technologies today get a little stagnant as a result of grant processes and the amount of time in between the next grant. And we've really built a, a model that actually is uh, recapitalized so that we can actually uh, upgrade as new technology evolves. And it's moving faster than ever. So I can assure you that there will be many upgrades during the term of that arrangement. Uh, one of the other areas that I think is very important is first responder user adoption. You know, we can build the network, but it has to be a compelling offer uh, for first responders to actually subscribe. So obviously that's an important part of the objectives-based RFP. We've been working on this since 2001. Uh, we don't want to dilly-dally around for another 10 years, and so speed to market is a critical 
component. And last but not least, I've already mentioned it, cybersecurity. Um, cybersecurity is evolving and continuing to be a challenge for not only FirstNet, but for companies around the globe, and that's a very important part. I've only mentioned five of the 16, but for me, those are really the key areas that I think are, are critically important. Did, and I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think people were sort of shocked that we actually issued the RFP, because uh, I've heard about it. Um, you know, we had some failed attempts in prior years to actually get this far, and I think people were actually quite surprised when we actually issued the RFP when we said we were going to. And then secondarily, we actually received bids on May 31st. And so, so it's going along as planned, and uh, I'm quite delighted about that and quite pleased about where we are. But now let's take a look ahead. That's the past. You know, the people who are around FirstNet say, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> right, Jeff? Um, and, uh, and so I think it's important to look ahead and see where we have to go. Um, you may recall that TJ Kennedy actually uh, shared with the board, and if you were in the public session, the strategic roadmap going forward. Um, and that really looks at what needs to be accomplished uh, between now and the issuance of the state plans and the deployment of the network. Um, some key milestones are a few administrative. We have some work to do with the FCC and with NTIA for things, uh, necessary elements for the opt-out review process, spectrum relocation, and fee review rules. So those are things that we need to work on and we're obviously working very collaboratively with those organizations to make sure that those stay on track. Um, those issues. Obviously the evaluation process, a key critical activity that we've planned for for quite some time now and we've already begun since we received the bids on May 31st. So we're not letting any grass grow under our feet and we're moving on that. I think another important thing that we're focused on is outreach at the executive level. As you know by the legislation, while we're talking to everybody in the world, it's the governor who makes the decision. So we have started already uh, to have those engagements with the key executives around the governor who are key influencers and making sure that the governor has and their staffs have everything that they need to make an informed decision. I have said that from the very beginning. You know, governors can make whatever decision they want, but I want them to make it based on fact and not on misinformation. So we're making a concerted effort between now uh, and the next several months to make sure that we get out and meet with the, uh, with the key executives at the, at the governor's staff level. And then, obviously, one of the important things uh, is a target for this year is to make an award uh, sometime later this year. And uh, subsequently, we want to deliver state plans in conjunction with our partners and get decisions from the governors. And last but not least, start deploying this network. So those are on the roadmap and I think very important. Now, when I was thinking about coming and talking to all of you, I actually ran across the Chinese zodiac symbols. I don't know how many of you spend any time looking at Chinese zodiac symbols, but I found them kind of interesting in terms of a correlation to FirstNet's history and, and perhaps a predictor of Future. So I went back to 2012 and uh, took a look and then took a, a year forward to see how they correlated. So let me just share with you what I found. I found it quite interesting. So you'll never forget 2012, at least I won't. It was the year of the dragon. And so one of the characteristics is you think big, you know, you're full of vitality and enthusiasm. And wow, wasn't that the case at FirstNet? I mean, that first board meeting, making all kinds of proclamations about what we were going to do. Well, as you know, that enthusiasm kind of got us in hot water and got us off to a rocky start. So I think that was probably a good correlation there. So then we roll into 2013, the year of the snake. Um, and so the year of the snake, one of the characteristics is you can shed your skin and take up something new. And obviously that's what we needed to do, and so that's what we did. And we got back on the right foot and got back on track again. So next is 2014, it's the year of the horse. Um, the, year, the, the horse characteristic is you have a capacity for hard work and, uh, and that's pretty amazing and you enjoy a good challenge and you're, to, and you're prepared to devote yourself to it. Well, I think that uh, was a year that we spent a lot of time putting together the strategic roadmap and for those from the executive team that were here working on that, I can tell you that that was a lot of hard work, but I think it was uh, a work well spent. 2015, the year of the goat. Uh, what what uh, connotes the year of the goat is perseverance. 
Um, they can be gentle on the surface, but tough on the inside. And I think that is uh, representative of getting ready for the RFP, getting the draft RFP out, getting the RFP out. You know, there were some pretty challenging times in 2015 to get all that done. Lots of questions from people, but I think it worked out quite well. 2016, we're in the 2016 year, year of the monkey. Uh, lively, quick-witted, and versatile. And so I think what we've done, we've shown our versatility at FirstNet, you know, in terms of outreach, in terms of modifying our approach, and of course we have to be pretty versatile as we work through the evaluation process and actually issue the award. So let's take a look one year forward, year of the rooster. Um, and this is going to tie back to some of my comments about moving into an operational mode. Um, the year of the rooster is known for high standards of excellence, which at times frustrates others. Um, and so my view is this is where the rubber meets the road. I mean, it's all everything we've done, I don't want to belittle all the work that we've done, but we're moving into an area that is really going to challenge us and that we have to have high standards of excellence if we're going to deliver to first responders what they deserve. Um, our strategic roadmap has served us well over the past couple of years and I assume and expect it to serve us going forward. And while all these things are important, I must tell you that the one thing that has been on my mind since I began with FirstNet and is increasingly on my mind today is the need to plan for the excellent operation of this network. Uh, I think we all need to understand that the operation of this network has to be done better than any network in the world today. And I've been around a lot of networks. Uh, as you know, I've worked for several different wireless companies and been around different wireless companies. And uh, we all get annoyed, I'm sure, because I see it when our text doesn't go through, when our voice call is degraded, uh, when it doesn't work, uh, when you can only hear one side of the conversation. We all get a little frustrated about that. But on the FirstNet network, seconds and minutes matter. It's a matter of life and death. And I, I just want to raise that to say, you know, this is not just any other network. We've got to do this in a way that is far better than anything that I've ever seen. And we have to recognize who, are, who the people are that we're serving. And organizationally, um, as I was coming in this morning, I was actually in the middle of my job. And, uh, you know, it reminds me, having gone back to work full time, how, how you have to be so focused on the results. Uh, whether it's hourly, weekly, monthly, uh, you have to be focused on what's happening in the organization, be very clear about what's important. And so what it doesn't mean is having committees. What it doesn't mean is having uh, layers and layers of management. Uh, we need to have a flat organization. We need to be nimble. We need to be agile. We need to be proactive and responsive. And so I'm, I'm just going to put that out there to say that's going to be the focus that I'm going to be having with the FirstNet team and with all the people around who are supporting FirstNet. We have to, while we've got work to do to get to the award and start deploying the network, we have to think culturally how we need to behave as an organization so that we can be absolutely excellent. Um, so you'll hear me talk about that, uh, you know, quite a bit. You know, before I close, I want to thank a number of people uh, who have helped us get to where we are today. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you. Obviously, you being here not only today, but in prior years, show your interest. Um, and, and you believe in the FirstNet mission. So obviously I want to thank all of you for that continued support. I'd also like to thank people who were in the early days who resisted the suggestion that public safety give up their pursuit of the D-Block and the nationwide network. I think you all know who those people are. Um, as I understand it, and I wasn't there, but I have it on good sources, that during a congressional hearing and congressional testimony, I believe Chief Johnson um, responded to uh, that suggestion with the response, quote, public safety is not paid to give up. That's a quote from Chief Johnson. I don't know about you, but I sure am glad that public safety didn't give up. We wouldn't be here today if public safety gave up. And that effort uh, and many of the people over the last three and a half years brings us to where we are here today. And that is on the cusp of realizing a nationwide public safety broadband network. I mean, I think it's pretty amazing, and I want to thank the people who didn't give up. I also think it's important to remember something very important that Chief Johnson mentioned yesterday during our Public Safety Advisory Council meeting. Um, and that's the fact that FirstNet exists 
because public safety demanded it. This is not somebody in some office somewhere in Congress saying, gee, I think this would really be a good idea. Uh, that certainly didn't happen. So remember, public safety demanded it. We got congressional legislation that enabled it. And sure, we didn't get everything we wanted, but there were compromises. It's the case in, in every one of these situations. But remember, this is not a federally mandated program. It probably feels federal to you because of where we sit in the organization, but it's not a federally mandated program. This is a public safety program. And I think that we are certainly a lot better off than we were several years ago on the failed attempts to do this. And there are certainly some things that we would like to see you know, be done differently. But I believe that the FirstNet board and the FirstNet organization, along with the help of many of you over the past three years, has done a pretty gosh darn good job of maneuvering through the, what's the right word for that? The challenges that we've had over the last three years that we've faced. But I think it's important um, that while we can be frustrated once in a while, we should never forget that this was demanded by public safety it's being shaped by public safety, and it's public safety's network. We should never forget that. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your faith. And remember, even though it was a year ago, and I know people thought I had lost my mind, I haven't changed it. I still feel that if we don't get this network deployed, we should all be shot. Thank you. <laughs>